to example two in section three three. So back to the example. How do you think the population standard deviation for set two compares to that of set one? So I think we found last time that for set one, our standard deviation, which was sigma, was 7.5366. So we don't really know what that number means, um, but we'll be able to compare set two to it. So for me, I think that set two is going to be larger. I think set two is more spread out. And the reason I think it's more spread out is the lowest value is 59 compared to 70. So it goes lower, right? And the largest number is 99 compared to 92. So that's more spread out, right? 59 to 99 is a bigger spread than 70 to 92. So let's go ahead and go through that formula again. So what I, we're gonna do again is we're gonna do the data value minus the mean. We found that the mean was 81. So we'll do each data value minus the mean. So we will do 59 minus 81, and we get negative 22. And then rather than working my way down, I'm gonna work my way over. So if you just hit squared, it'll know that we're squaring the negative and we get 484. So I find it a little bit more efficient to go this way. So 70 minus 81, negative 11, and square it, we get 121. 80 minus 81 is just one, square it, it's just one. Sorry, it's negative one, but squared, it's positive one. So all the squared numbers should be positive. 97 minus 81, 16 squared is 256. And then finally, 99 minus 81, 18. When we square that, we get 324. And then we'll go ahead and find the totals. I like to find the total of the middle column really just to check my work. So the middle column, remember, should always be zero. So it's really just to check. Yep, we got zero. And then go ahead and add the um, column on the right, the very last column. And then we're almost done at that step. 484 plus 121 plus 1, plus 256, plus 324, and we get 1186. So that is the majority of the formula. So we're going to go ahead and plug into to this formula again for sigma. So that represented the entire sum on top. So that was the sum of x minus mu squared. So we're gonna take the square root of 1186, that's the entire sum on top, and we're gonna divide by a five, because we have five numbers. So you can go ahead and do division. 1186 divided by 5, and then we'll take the square root of 237.2. And that'll be my standard deviation. So 15.401. We'll talk about rounding in example 3. So there we go. For data set 1, we got a sigma or standard deviation of 7. 0.5366, and then data set two is almost double. We got 15.401 because it's more spread out. So again, I don't really know the individual numbers, but I know that data set two is more spread out. That's our big takeaway. Um, and so the rounding rule, we'll go over that. It's not gonna be decimal places, it's going to be um, digits. So the rounding rule for standard deviation is at least five significant digits. And we'll often just call it digits in this class to make it a little bit shorter. So let's review how that works in example three, and then we'll take a little break from the video. So digits is not decimal places, right? Decimal places are after the decimal. Digits are just digits overall. So if we look at 14.230456, we just start counting digits. So we start on the far left, 
one, two, three, four, five. And then we can cut everything off after that. So we count the first five digits from the left and then we just follow rounding rules. So the four after the zero tells me to stay at zero. So we just call this 14.230. And that is using five digits. The zero needs to stay, it's the fifth digit. All right, we have 2,145,349 and 17 out of 100. Um, and we want five digits. So again, we start from the left, one, two, three, four, five, and then we can round after that. So we're rounding to the hundreds place. So the four and the nine disappear, but those place values can't go away because three is in the hundreds place. So this is still 2,145, and then it'll just round to 300. Right after the decimal place, we can drop it, but before the decimal place, we change to zeros. And those zeros are considered not significant digits. If you've taken chemistry, you might have learned this. Um, they're just there as placeholders, but the zeros themselves don't really have any value. All right, and then the final example, we have 0 0.00237629. Um, these zeros in the front don't count. Again, they're not significant, so they don't count. So don't count zeros in the front. So the first digit I count is the two. So one, two, three, four, five. So we'll cut off at the second two, and this one will round up to three. So the zeros in front are there, They're, they just aren't significant. And then we get two, three, seven, six, three, when we follow rounding rules. So the two, three, seven, six, three are my five significant digits. And that's how you round to five digits. So decimal places don't matter, digits matter for standard deviation.